Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus, where we strive for supernatural immunity from the wickedness of today's world by focusing on the inspired, infallible words of Holy Scripture. Before we begin today's discussion, a short prayer. All blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to Almighty God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so my power to speak truth without error, and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God. Any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the viewer and listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed in your heart, your mind, and your soul. If you end up enjoying today's video, please give it a thumbs up, a positive comment, share. If you haven't already done so, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. If you don't like the video for whatever reason, feel free to give it a thumbs down and or a negative comment. But please, if you do give it a negative comment, watch the entire video and point out to me what I stated in this video that you believe is wrong. Now let us begin the discussion. Today's discussion is in the Eschatology playlist and is entitled, Who is the Beast of the Sea of Revelation, Chapter 13, Part 1. By the way, I have some other videos, Eschatology, the Unholy Trinity of Revelation, Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, the first premiered June 9, 2021, the second June 26, 2021, and another video, New Testament Treasures playlist, The Three Personalities of the Devil, premiered May 8th, 2023, that go over some of the points that we go over in this video. Now we're talking about the book of Revelation, and I believe one way to break down the book of Revelation is to understand, like the Gospels, where you have the earthly ministry of Lord Jesus shown from four different perspectives to teach us different spiritual truths. I believe the book of Revelation is the same story of end times told from two different perspectives, one starting in chapter one and ending in chapter 11, and another starting in chapter 12 and finally ending in chapter 22. Considering that, I believe you have some past events in chapters 1, 2, and 3, and then chapter 12. I be, believe you have a vision of heaven in chapters 4 and 5. And then information about the seals and the beast in chapter 6 and chapter 13. And we're focusing on chapter 13 in today's video information about the 144,000 and the rapture event in chapters 7 and 14, information about the wrath of God in chapters 8 through 11, and then in chapters 15 through 18, information about the victory of the Lamb in chapters 19 and 20, and finally, information about the new heaven, the new earth, the new creation in chapters 21 and 22. Now in the Gospels, Matthew 25, Mark 13, Luke 21, we have information primarily about the destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple in AD 70, but also some information that points, I believe, to the beast and the rapture event, again, primarily about the destruction of Jerusalem. Matthew 19, Matthew 25, some judgments, they play out in Revelation 20. In the epistles, 2 Thessalonians 2, information about the beast, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 2 Thessalonians 1, and 1 Thessalonians 4, information about the rapture event, with rapture actually being in Revelation chapter 4, verse 17, and the Latin Vulgate, see, rapiamur, taken up. That's where the word rapture comes from. Now again, today we're focusing on Revelation chapter 13. Here's verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now to prove that the book of Revelation isn't written in strict chronologic order, where chapter 1 comes before 2, and 3 before 4, etc. Revelation 17, 18, The beast that thou saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. So obviously 13 comes before 17. But to prove my point, because notice the beast first appears in Revelation 13, 1, but notice Revelation 11, 7. And when they, these are the two witnesses, shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So notice the events of Revelation 11, verse 7, do not come before Revelation 13, 1. So the order would be something like this, proving the point. All right, here we are. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 2, which is the focus on this particular video. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. Sand. In the Koine Greek, it's amon, sand. Greek Strong's 285. Amon. Two occurrences, that particular word. Matthew 7, 26, building your house on the sand. And Revelation 12, 17. I'm not sure why Bible Hub only has Revelation 12, 17 here and not Revelation 13, 1. There are a few English translations which have the sand reference of Revelation 13, 1, actually in Revelation 12, 17. It's derived from Greek Strong's 285, Amos, sand, sandy ground. Here are some verses where it's used, Matthew 7, 26, Romans 9, 27, Hebrews 11, 12, Revelation 12, 17, or 13, 1, Revelation 28. Right, there's Matthew 7, 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So there's the negative connotation there. Romans 9, 27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. That's Isaiah 10, 22. Though your people of Israel be like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will return. Destruction has been decreed, overflowing with righteousness. So notice the sand of the sea here connected to Israel. Hebrews eleven twelve. Therefore sprang the even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable, again referring to the Israelites, descendants of Abraham. Revelation 28, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, referring to Satan here, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Again, the negative connotation here. C, Revelation 13.1, Thalassis, Greek Strong's 22.81, C, Thalassis, 29 occurrences, I won't show you them all, First Matthew 4.15, which is referring, by the way, to Isaiah 11.1-2. And that's Greek Strong's 22.81, Thalassa, the sea, in contrast to the land, a particular sea or lake, for example, the Sea of Galilee, the Red Sea. Here's the usages in Revelation. Revelation 4, 6, Revelation 5, 13, Revelation 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3. I'm going to go over several of these verses, starting with Revelation 5, 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. Uh, St. John does this many times in his writings when he wants to emphasize something, he repeats it. So notice every created being in heaven, earth, under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and then he repeats it, and all that are in them. Heard I sing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, the person of the Father, and unto the Lamb, the person of the Son, forever and ever. Notice proving the Lamb is uncreated because everything creation is on one end and Father and Son on the other. So he's uncreated, he's God, and he receives the same blessing, honor, glory, and power from all creation as does the Father. Revelation 8.8, 8, twice. Revelation 8.9, Revelation 10.2 and 10.5. Revelation 10, 6, 10, 8, 12, 12, 12, 17, or 13, 1, obviously, where they both say sand of the sea, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, let's look at Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So notice the sea here. Hmm. The earth and the sea. So the devil's coming. Hmm. And remember, obviously, in Revelation 13, 1, we have the beast of the earth and the beast of the sea, don't we? We're speaking of the beast of the sea today. Revelation 14, 7, Revelation 15, 2, twice. Revelation 16, 3, twice. Revelation 18, 17, 18, 19, 18, 21. Revelation 28 and 20, 13. Let's look at Revelation 20, 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Isn't this interesting? So death and hell, Hades gave up the dead, but then the sea gave up the dead. Hmm. Does this refer to the flood or to something else, something spiritual, perhaps? Revelation 21.1. And here, Revelation 21.1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 
So now we're going back to Revelation 20 and considering Revelation 21.1 and the other verses, C is death. There's no more death. There's no more C. Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, the third day. Remember, Lord Jesus rose on the third day, right? He rose out of death. He defeated death. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding sea and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day so notice on the third day the earth the rock emerged from the seas and life grew on it see Lord Jesus is the rock he emerges out of the sea of death and life grows from him so you see the connection of the sea to death Jonah chapter 1 verses 15 through 17 so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea and the sea ceased from a raging then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish in the sea three days and three nights. Jonah chapter 2 verses 5 through 6. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depths closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. So he's in the sea, but then it sounds like he's in the grave in a daze, the bottom of the mountains, the earth with their bars was about me forever. So the sea is another reference to Hades, right? The heaven, there's the first heaven, the sky and atmosphere, the second heaven, outer space, the third heaven, the heaven of heavens, the spiritual realm. Then there's earth, but then there's under the earth, the, there's Hades, but then the sea is also a reference to Hades, these depths beast. In the Greek, therion, Greek Strong's 2342, beast. 2342, therion, wild beast, a wild beast, an animal met a brute. Bestial nature. Notice it never refers to animals used for sacrifice. So these are unclean animals, never used for sacrifice to God. Revelation chapter 4, verse 6, and unto the, excuse me, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. This is the King James rendering. It's actually living creatures. Notice it's not thirion, it's zoa, right? Zoe, life, living creatures. Greek Strong's 2226. So I prefer the King James rendering, but here beasts is inappropriate. It should say living creatures. Thirion, 19 occurrences in scripture. Acts 28.4, Acts 28.5, Hebrews 12.20, Revelation 11.17, Acts 28.4-5. And when the barbarian saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, some sort of serpent, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom through he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he took off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Notice all of these references here. A venomous beast, right? Murderer, escaping from the sea, thrown into the fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 24. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor into blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard and treated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, Mount Sinai, obviously, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dart. And so terrible is the sight that Moses says, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and into an innumerable company of angels, the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Again, the beast not used in sacrifice. Notice here, connected to Mount Sinai and to the heavenly Jerusalem, right? And to us finally being spirits of just men made perfect. You know, this is prior to our physical resurrection and glorified bodies. Revelation 13.1, Revelation 13.2, Revelation 13.11, Revelation 13.12, all referring to this beast here that we're seeing there in Revelation 13.1. Revelation 14.9, Revelation 14.11, Revelation 17.3, Revelation 17.8, yet again, 
the same being. Revelation 17.8, Revelation 17.11, 17.16, 19.19, all the same entity. Revelation 19.20, Revelation 24, Revelation 20.10. All referring here to what we see first in Revelation 13.1, here at least. Then notice seven heads and ten horns. Hmm. Where do we see that as well? Revelation 12, 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. This is Satan, the devil, right? Having seven heads and ten horns. Isn't this interesting? And seven crowns upon his heads. And upon his horns, ten crowns. So notice the beast of the sea, like Satan, has seven heads and ten horns, but unlike Satan, has crowns on his ten horns, while Satan, the dragon, has seven crowns upon his seven heads. Revelation 17, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit and of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast as the whore of Babylon, full of names of blasphemy. But it says the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So obviously, Revelation 17, 3, this scarlet-colored beast is what we're seeing there in Revelation 13, 1. Genesis 2, 2. And on the seventh day, so let's look at these references to seven and ten. These numbers mean something. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all work which he had made. So the Sabbath, right? Perfection, completion. Exodus 20, 14, the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. And again, how do we reconcile with God? We marry into the family. Exodus 34, 28, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights, right? four times 10, he did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the 10 commandments. So when you think of seven, is it the seventh day? Is it the seventh commandment? When you think of 10, 10 commandments, right? Revelation 1, 4, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, perfection. Grace be unto you in peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So the multiple references to seven throughout the book of Revelation, starting right there. Revelation 1.12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Revelation 1.13, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. By the way, considering what we're seeing in Revelation 7 most likely does not refer to the seventh commandment, it rather refers to the seventh day of creation, completeness, perfection. Revelation 1.20, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Revelation 4, 5, and out of the throne proceeded th lightnings and thunderings and voices. This is the throne of the Father. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So the perfection of the Holy Spirit. Seven lands, seven spirits. Revelation 5.1, And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Revelation 5.6, And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, you know, living creatures, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. So as the Father has the seven spirits of God, representing by seven lamps of fire burning before his throne, and the Lamb, the God-man, the Son who took on flesh, has the seven spirits of God, representing seven horns and seven eyes. Seven horns. Now, isn't it interesting? So the lamb has seven horns, whereas Satan, the dragon, and the beast of the sea of Revelation 13 have 10 horns. Revelation 19, 12, referring to the lamb coming at the bottle of Armageddon. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So notice he has many crowns, more than just seven or 10. Revelation 5, 11, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, a multiple of 10. Again, we're looking at the seven verses 10 reference. Revelation 8, 2, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and them were given seven trumpets. Revelation 15, 1, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. 
Revelation 20, verses four through six here. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, another multiple of 10. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such Second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and it shall reign with him a thousand years, this multiple of 10. You see this play out in Matthew 19, I believe, and I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, verses 27 to 30. This is the connection of these judgments. Matthew 19, 27 to 30. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones. Notice what we saw there in Revelation 24 to six. We saw thrones, plural, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So notice that judgment appears to be of the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, and there's a reference of 10. So 12 is a number connected to Israel, obviously, the 12 tribes, but 10 is connected to Israel, the 10 commandments given to Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold, oh, well, there's your multiple of 10, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. He thinks this coincidental. Obviously, Matthew 19, 27 to 30 appears to be what we're seeing there in Revelation 24 to 6, and a thousand years, and here a hundredfold. And notice who's being judged, the 12 tribes of Israel. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 through 6 here. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed, and he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I built till the wing, therefore it was, were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side and had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which I had upon the back of it, four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it. Notice all these references of these beasts here, considering what we see in the beast of the sea. Notice the great sea, Numbers 34, 6. And as for the western border of Israel, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border. So the sea here obviously refers to the Mediterranean Sea. Hmm, so the beast out of the sea coming out of the Mediterranean Sea? rise up out of the sea. So there's the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, all of these kingdoms, right? Finalizing with Rome, right? Which was the kingdom, the beast at the time of Lord Jesus, surrounded or had a connection to the Mediterranean Sea. Eagle's wings, Revelation 12, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for time and times and half a time from the face of the servant. So the connection of the eagle, we see eagle's wings here. And by the way, Rome had a connection to the eagle, didn't it? Proverbs chapter 30, verses 19 to 20. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of a sea, and the way of a man with a maid, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. So we have numbers one, eagle, two, serpent upon a rock, three, ship in the midst of a sea, man with a maid, four, and this adulterous woman, five. By the way, five usually is a reference to Israel, right? The five books of Moses. What would four be a reference to? Well, you can imagine it's a reference to the four books of the gospel or the New Testament writings. How about one through three? Father, eagle, son, serpent upon a rock. How would the son be a serpent upon a rock? Remember, it's always father, son, and Holy Spirit. Well, the son became sin for us. He's the rock. He crushes the serpent upon the rock, right? So you see connections of the sun to a serpent and a rock and the ship in the midst of a sea. Obviously, connections to the Holy Spirit to the sea, right? Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 2, when we first see the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. So I think the eagle here is a reference to the person of a father, the serpent upon a rock, the per person of the sun, ship in the midst of the sea, the 
person of the Holy Spirit. The way of a man with a maid, well, four, we talked about the four Gospels, New Testament writings. The man with the maid, well, a maid, that's an alma, that's a young unmarried virgin, a woman. So the man with the maid, is that the connection of the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary, right? Leading to the birth of Lord Jesus? Is that maid the bride, the church, and the man is Lord Jesus? Also four is the right fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath. Lord Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. So I think here in Proverbs 30, uh, verses 19 through 20, there's unbelievable spiritual significance. Eagle, person the Father. Serpent upon a rock, person the Son. Ship in the midst of the sea, person the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Trinity. And how do we marry into the Holy Trinity? Well, the church marries the Son. The maid, the virgin, marries the man, the God-man. Hmm, who the adulterous woman would be? Well, what happened with Israel? They were an adulterous woman. They were married, but then they did wickedness to God, didn't they? So I think five, again, leads us to four, and four leads us to three, and three leads us to two, which leads us to one. So Israel led us to the church, the church through the Holy Spirit, and the Son leads us to the Father. Hopefully you found that interesting. Notice leopard, Revelation 13, 2, and Daniel chapter 7, 6, leopard. Bear, Revelation 13, 2, bear. Daniel 7, 5. Lion, Revelation 13, 2. Lion, Daniel 7, 4. Coincidence? I don't think so. So notice the leopard has four heads. The bear has one head. The lion has one head. By the way, the lion represents the Babylonian Empire, the bear, the Medo-Persian Empire, the leopard, the Greco-Macedonian Empire. So the beast, therefore, if you would have a composite of Daniel 7, so far has six heads. Let's continue, Daniel 7, verses 7 through 8. After this, I saw in the night visions to behold a fourth beast. Here's the fourth beast. We saw the one through three. Dreadful and terrible. This will be the Roman Empire, right? And strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Ten horns. So the fourth beast had one head and ten horns. So the composite of all of these four beasts would be seven heads and ten horns. So the composite of what began with the Babylonian Empire conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire, conquered by the Greco-Macedonian Empire, finally conquered by the Roman Empire, right, which is the time of the Lord Jesus, and the church conquered that, would be a beast that would have seven heads and ten horns. And that's exactly what the beast of the sea has in uh, Revelation 13.1. Daniel chapter 7, continuing, verses 15 through 18. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These four great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever. Hmm. So again, Babylonian, um, Medo-Persian, Greco-Macedonian, ending with the Roman Empire, and the church conquered that Roman Empire, didn't it? So it all makes sense with what happened. Continue, Daniel chapter 7, verses 19 through 22. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Till the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints in the Most High. The time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So is this a past event, or is this a future event, right? Possibly referring to what we're starting to see here in Revelation, and we're seeing there in Revelation 13, 1 to 2. Continue in Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 to 27. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times in the dividing of time. 
but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So again, is this what happened in the Roman Empire and the church taking it over, or does this refer to end times here, right? Unto the end. It seems to be end times. So obviously, connections between Daniel and the book of Revelation. So, I hope you found that edifying, and Lord willing, we'll have future videos going over more information of Revelation 13, the beast of the sea. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the viewer and listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, positive comment, share. If you haven't already done so, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Again, if you don't like the video for whatever reason, feel free to give it a thumbs down and or a negative comment. But again, if you do give it a negative comment, I hope you've watched the entire video and please point out to me what I stated in this video that you believe is wrong. God bless and keep you all. Come Lord Jesus.